Good afternoon, everybody. JWS here with you, bringing you another podcast. It's time to recap our week one picks of the NFL. Went 8-8, eight and eight, folks. Uh, losing Sunday Night Football and Monday Night Football to even the record up. And that, that's kind of a trend that we've seen over the last few years. We don't really pick Thursday Night Football, Sunday Night Football. Monday. Those picks don't really go our way. I almost had these two picks flipped. I really almost took the Cowboys... And I really almost took the Jets here. This game was closer than this one, so I don't feel as bad. But the Jets losing Aaron Rodgers uh, Monday night and winning in a punt return on a punt return in overtime. So that's how the Jets won that one. Very glad I did take the Saints in this one. The Buccaneers being the Vikings. Very surprised by that. I wasn't surprised that the Bengals lost. I was just sort of surprised in which the manner they did. I could have taken the Commanders here, so that's three games where I was kind of on the fence. I don't think I was ever going with the Packers. I think I was held bit on the Bears, but a great pick to take the Rams. Tough break to take the Dolphins over the Chargers, but the Dolphins did beat the Chargers. They scored a late touchdown, Tyreek Hill. Caught the touchdown pass. A great pick and a lucky pick. The Raiders beating the Broncos. So you see a lot of those picks that were kind of up in the air that went our way in those games that were toss-ups that I was kind of on the fence about. So the Saints is one. The Cardinals is two. So that's one and one. Raiders is two and one. Rams three and one. Three and three. So we were three and five. It was kind of, we should have taken that team, but we chose the other team. Uh, a big headline from week one, I know Aaron Rodgers getting hurt is one, but two is how many road teams ended up winning in week one, including the Lions. So the Lions is one, Buccaneers is two, and then the Jaguars and Niners, that's four. The Raiders, Dolphins, Eagles, Packers, Rams, that's five games right there. That's seven, eight. So eight games, half of the slate, the road team won. Just shows you that any given week in the NFL, you can win or you can lose. So throw the records out the window, and he, especially here early. So, And that's another thing. To come away with an 8-8 eight and eight record early in the season, that's a win for us because we're trying to fill out all the teams. The teams are trying to get their rosters straightened out. You don't know what the high draft picks are going to do. You don't really know what everybody has early in the season. So to go 8-8, eight and eight, I consider that a win. The Eagles did not look as dominating as I thought. I mean, I did say that Bill Belichick was going to have a plan. I thought that they would understand what Nick Sirianni was looking to do. It was so much that they stopped the Eagles. They just made them have turnovers. Turnovers are a part of the game. You turn the ball over, you might lose. So the Eagles turning the ball over, they kept the Patriots in that game. And Justin Fields just absolutely did not look like the quarterback of the future for the Bears. And that's interesting. I've seen everything on social media saying the Bears traded away the number one pick. They could have had Bryce Young. Now, Bryce Young didn't play bad. I think he turned it over twice, maybe, against the Falcons. If I had to say what rookie quarterback played the best in Week 1, it has to be Anthony Richardson. He played very well against Jacksonville, but all rookie quarterbacks lost. They were 0-3. C.J. Stroud did not play his best. The, Ra the Ravens did a great job of stopping him. And I give the Rams a lot of credit. I think the Rams were without their top two receivers, and they won that game because they were throwing it to a number 10, uh, uh, Puka Kuna, I think is his name, or maybe Puka's his last name. But they were throwing that ball to that guy. And when you're throwing it to that guy and not Van Jefferson, you know, no Robert Woods in L.A., Odell Beckham is gone, Cooper Cup is hurt. So to have a third-string receiver and he's your main guy that you throw the ball to, I think he had, what, like 10 catches? Hats off to the Rams finding a way to win. They probably have a pretty good loaded backfield. Of course, they have the game breaker in uh, Tutu Atwell, who had a couple of uh, deep catches and long catches. We don't really, I don't really think we know what Jimmy G can do in, in, in Vegas. Hopefully, Jacoby Myers can play this week when, when uh, I lost at Oakland, when Vegas takes the field. Because having Devontae and Jacoby as a one two punch, I think that's going to benefit. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and I, I think the Raiders maybe need to answer a little bit in that, that running back room 
Because I don't think they're going to have, I don't think they have really a, a do it all back. I think their, their running game is maybe a little lacking. We'll see what Baker Mayfield can do for an encore in Tampa. I think they're at home this week. And we'll see. Uh, Derek Carr, this Titans Saints game, that was a field goal game. But the Saints got the one touchdown. Derek Carr finding uh, Rashid Shahid for the only touchdown of the game. We'll see if Derek Carr can improve. And we'll see what the Titans can do to try and get to 1 and 1. The Niners will try and get to 2 and 0. Oh. The Cardinals may start 0-2 now with no Kyler Murray this week. Uh, Jonathan Gannon came out and said that Josh Dobbs was going to start again, so we'll see what happens there. Don't want to give away too much for our NFL picks, but those are just kind of some of the headlines as we go into Week 2. The Chiefs, they're on the road. They play the Jags. Not an easy game. Could the Chiefs start 0-2? Will the Lions start 2-0? That's going to put a capper on Week 1 in the NFL. Again, let me know what you think was the biggest headline in Week 1 how you did if you picked games, and what maybe surprised you in week one. I gave you my thoughts. Love to hear from you. So give this podcast a listen, and we'll have plenty more NFL and NCAA picks coming up here shortly, so be sure to tune in for that.